we can take our seats and visitors retire on the rail. We'll get started. And before we start, I'd ask that if anyone has a cell phone or any other electronic device that makes any noise, I'd ask that you please turn it off or turn it on silent. Thank you very much for your cooperation. To give our invocation this morning, the chair recognizes the Venerable Lama Lo Song Samten Rinpoche, Spiritual Director of Tibetan Buddhist Center of Philadelphia. He's here today as the guest of Councilwoman Gim. I would ask all guests, visitors, and members to please rise. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for asking me to hear this morning for the prayer. This is an ancient prayer from Tibet. Peace and love and compassion. <clears throat> You Mano Lanzala Batene Yanyo do Sanje Sala Shadu Su. Peace. Thank you. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Council of Bidis. Thank you very much. Thank you. And our next order of business is approval of the journal of the meeting of Thursday, February 16, 2017. And the chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the journal of the meeting of Thursday, February 16, 2017 be approved. 
Thank you. It has been moved and properly seconded that the journal of the meeting of Thursday, February 16, 2017, stand approved. All those in favor will indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and the journal is approved. This time we will talk to the member, I guess, the majority leader. I see. Okay, I didn't, I didn't see. Uh, the next order of business is a request for leave of absence, and the chair recognizes Councilman Heenan. Thank you, Council President. On behalf of the majority, there are no requests of leaves of absence today. Chair, thanks the gentleman. The chair now recognizes the minority leader, Councilman Brian O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. President. Dow Clark. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I uh, uh, have no request for leave of absence on behalf of the Republicans. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, this time, uh, I would like to dispense with the regular order of business, and I would like to thank everyone who has come down today to witness their government in action. Uh, we hope your stay here is a knowledgeable one, uh, but more importantly, we hope that it's a pleasurable one, so much so that you come back again. So again, thank you so much. We really appreciate it, and we hope you come back and join us again. This time, the chair recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell, who presented a resolution recognizing February 2017 as Career and Technical Education Awareness Month with Dr. Bowman. Julia Padilla and those accompanying them, please join the councilwoman at the podium. Before, before we start the presentation, the chair recognizes Councilman Johnson. Thank you, Council President. I would like to be excused today by voting aye on all bills and resolutions. Leave shall be granted. Thank you Thank very you, Council much, Council President. Council. Thank you. Chair now recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell. Mr. President, we are honored today. I do have CTE schools like um, like West, like uh, many others, as many of us do. And the school district sought to bring this wonderful school. And uh, since we understand that this is Councilwoman Maria Quinone Sanchez School, it makes a uh, Big difference. So all of us who have CTE schools are honored, but we're not quite as honored as uh, Councilwoman Maria is to have her school here. And so we uh, do bring a special, special congratulations uh, for her and for all of these students. Resolution honoring and recognizing February 2017 as Career and Technical Education Awareness Month in the city of Philadelphia. Whereas more than 6,000 Philadelphia School District students attend a career and technical education program at more than 30 high schools across the city. And whereas these students earn valuable college credits and industry recognized credentials in these programs, and whereas 81% of dropouts say relevant, real-world learning opportunities would have kept them in high school and... Point of personal privilege, I am an alumnus. I will not say the year because none of these young people were born. <laughs> 
but a shout out to MassBOM and to all the CTE programs that I know this council has supported over the years. Whereas the average high school graduation rate for students concentrating in CTE is 90% compared to the national average of 74.9%, and whereas CTE students in the school district of Philadelphia earn over 3,400 industry credentials annually and Whereas, there will be more than 6,700 job openings in the trade, transportation, and utility sector over the next five years in Philadelphia. And whereas the School District of Philadelphia has planned more than a dozen events throughout the month of February to raise awareness around the opportunities within the career and technical education programs they run and... Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council does hereby recognize February 2017 as Career and Technical Education Awareness Month in the City of Philadelphia. Further resolved that an engrossed copy of this resolution will be presented as a sincere expression of City Council of Philadelphia's gratitude to honor this important month. And the chair recognizes Dr. Bowman and Mr. Padilla for remarks. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you, and it's a privilege. I'd just like to speak quickly about our students, and actually I could speak <clears throat> lengthily about our students. These are truly the nicest students I've ever worked with. I've been in one other school district, and these kids match anyone I've ever worked with, and they're a pleasure to work with. They are fine young men and women. They have un extraordinary talents. Many are prepared for college, and also many are prepared for career. Some are prepared for both. And MassBomb has a long history of providing students with a great career in technical education, and these students continue with that tradition. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. And I just want to say thank you for being here and recognizing our MassBomb students. MassBomb has been helping our students since 1929. We've done amazing attributes when it comes to the vocational trades. We had several, several students in different capacities over the years become successful. We have Councilwoman Sanchez, who's an alumni here, that actually graduated from the school that's part of your party in your office here. So that's a great honor. Also, just to let you know that we have carpentry, welding, electrical, graphic design, business, health fields, different other programs that we have here in the school. And they strive every day to make a difference. And hopefully with these achievements, they'll be our future leaders and help us out with our retirements in the future. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Michelle Armstrong, and I am the Executive Director of Career and Technical Education for the School District of Philadelphia. And I would like to say, thank you, I would like to say that on behalf of all of our students throughout the school district and all of our teachers, who I, I believe are unsung heroes, and our principals, I would like to say thank you for taking this time to honor Career and Technical Education within the school district. And to let you know that this school, Mass Bomb, represents all of the 30 high schools within the city that have the programs that are preparing young people and giving them the choice as to whether or not they want to take their direct path to post-secondary education or to a career. But CTE gives young people the choice. And we are honored, once again, that you have given us this recognition. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Bates.
Thank you. At this time, the chair recognizes Councilman O, who will present a resolution recognizing the 2016 winners of PHL Live Center Stage. Would Kelly Lee and those accompanying her please join the councilman at the podium? And joining Councilman O, we have Councilwoman Bass, Councilwoman Blondo Reynolds Brown. And Councilman Green. Okay. Before we start the presentation, looks like we may need a bigger stage. <laughs> As we're, um, as we're getting people situated on the stage, uh, the chair recognizes Councilwoman Parker. Folks, can hold it out, please. Yes. Excuse, due to a long-standing commitment and would like to have be voted, recorded as voting aye on our bills and resolutions. Thank you, Councilwoman. Leave shall be granted in the record. We hope to return, Mr. President, but if All we right. don't. It's okay. All right. Given the size of the stage, we might be here for a while. So. <laughs> uh, All right. All right. All right, Councilman. All right. Leave shall be granted, and the record will reflect your voting eye on bills, all bills and resolutions. Thank you. Okay. Judges, artists, yes. Could, could I ask the category winners to step up front for sure? And while you're gathering, let me just let everybody know that uh, the City Council of Philadelphia has been instrumental in supporting uh, the music industry here in Philadelphia, the creative economy, and particularly PHL Live 2016 has been completed. We have 10 category winners as well as a People's Choice. And I'd just like to point out that some of the people standing here with us, uh, Mark Raz from the Country Station, XTU 92.5, uh, Simply Monica, Heat 100, David Ivory, Grammy-nominated engineer and delegate to the National Grammys, uh, our classical music winner, Jessica Nelson, our R&B winner, Boots Green, Brent Porsche from WMMR 93.3, Band Arrivals, the country folk winner, Jakaya Sanders, world music winner, DJ Domino, the DJ category winner, Salandra Rice Prince, Voices of Inspiration, uh, Jennifer Logue, Rock on Philly, Marilyn Rodriguez, Mega 105, Ahora Si, uh, Charlie Bartlett, Jazz It Up Philly, Jeff Duperon, 90.1 WRTI, Kevin Gordon, 90.1, WRTI, that's Jazz, Sonia McDuffie, Philly Hip Hop Awards, Brooke DeCaro, winner of the pop category, uh, DJ uh, Casper from Dark Child Entertainment, uh, Dice Raw, Legendary Roots Crew, St. Thomas Gospel Choir, the winner of the gospel uh, category with Senior Pastor Martini Shaw, Keith from Up the, Bl Keith from up the Block, a comedian and uh, a recording artist himself, and the publisher of that mag, Brian Cronin. I don't know if I missed anybody, but let me say the reason I'm pointing them out is because they've all volunteered. They don't get paid. They volunteer to go through hundreds of submissions that are free. People can submit in 10 musical categories, and then they pick five finalists. The venues provide a free location. Uh, Underground Arts, Hard Rack Cafe, World Cafe Live, um, the Clef Club, and so on. And, th and after the performance, the judges select one winner who wins $1,000, free studio recording time, and many other prizes. And it's important because it's not just their aspiration to achieve their goals as a musician, songwriter, uh, but also uh, they get paid and they pay their taxes, and they help our city grow. And so with that, let me ask you uh, to uh, allow me to present this to our chief cultural officer, Kelly Lee, who will then say a few words. This is a resolution recognizing and honoring the 2016 winners of PHL Live Center Stage. And that would be... 
Oh, okay. We'll do our presentations and I'll get it. Okay, cool. Whereas PHL Live Center Stage is a music initiative established by Councilman David O as chairman of the Committee on Global Opportunities, Creative slash Innovative Economy. And whereas PHL Live Center Stage provides local musicians with exciting opportunities to be discovered and promoted to achieve success here in Philadelphia. And whereas PHL Live Center Stage's performances and award show are structured across 10 different genres of music, bringing diverse musicians together. The 10 different genres are rock, hip hop, jazz, classical, gospel, country folk, world, pop, R&B, and DJ. In addition, a People's Choice Award is selected as an 11th category. And whereas this year's finalists performed live in prominent local venues, World Cafe Live, Milk Boy, Hard Rock Cafe, Reformation Lutheran Church, The Clef Club of Jazz, Warm Daddies, The Trinity Center for Urban Life, Coda, Voltage Lounge, and Fire and Ice, and? And whereas I stand here green with envy, for those who were blessed with the gift of song, because I was not. <laughs> Whereas the final winners for each genre announced in December at the Trocadero Theater during the third annual Phil Live Center Stage Award Show were decided by judges who are considered experts in the industry. And whereas the People's Choice Award is voted on by the audience before and during the award show at the Trocadero, Trocadero Theater. Who's been there? And whereas the winning artists from each genre receive top prizes, such as $1,000, studio recording time, music videos, documentaries, and openings at major concerts. That's a big deal. And whereas the 2016 winner of the rock category is RFA and whereas the 2016 winner of the hip hop category is Relive, and whereas the 2016 winner of the jazz category is Lauren Talese, and whereas the 2016 winner of the classical category is Jessica Rose Nelson, and whereas the 2016 winner of the gospel category is the St. Thomas Gospel Choir, and whereas the 2016 winner of the country folk category is the Band of Rivals, and whereas the 2016 winner of the world category is Jakia and, and whereas the 2016 winner of the pop category is Brooke DeCaro and whereas the 2016 winner of the R&B category is Boots Green and whereas the 2016 winner of the DJ category is DJ Domino, and whereas the 2016 winner of the People's Choice is Kendall Conrad. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Philadelphia that it hereby recognizes and honors the 2016 winners of PHL Live Center Stage, further resolve that an engrossed copy of the resolution be presented to Coors Light as evidence of, the, of gratitude in this legislative body. Um, and let me say that uh, I did not mention that Kaisha Woods, Cho Moody, Randall Jefferson of Tone and Tenor, and David Cristofaro are also here with us today. Let's give them all a round of applause. And the chair recognizes Kelly Lee for remarks. Good morning, members of City Council, morning. honored guests, PHL Live Center Stage winners and finalists. I am happy to accept on behalf of the Office of Arts, Culture, and the Creative Economy, this resolution from City Council for the success, successful completion of the 2016 PHL Live Center Stage Competition. Congratulations to all the winners. For the third year, our office was proud to partner with Councilman David O oh on PHL Live an initiative that has showcased the tremendous musical talent our city possesses across all genres of music. 
it has given a diverse range of artists the opportunity to perform on many notable stages throughout Philadelphia, which you just heard about. What is new for this year is that we will collaborate with Councilman O and PHL Live to help to promote these artists that have taken part in the competition by providing performance opportunities for them in neighborhoods throughout the city. Through our Office of Arts and Culture programs, such as Culture in the Courtyard, Performances in Public Spaces, and Philly Celebrates Jazz during Jazz Appreciation Month in April, our office will support these artists and enable them to bring their music directly to their own communities. We are committed to making sure that every neighborhood in Philadelphia has access to high quality arts and cultural experiences, and we cannot wait to do this through having PHLI winners and finalists be music ambassadors of their respective genres in all corners of the city. You can also help to promote these talented artists. The next time you have an event um, and you need live music or you are creating a playlist, go to the PHL, PHL Live website, look up these artists, hire them, and purchase their music. I just want to thank, again, Councilman O oh for allowing our office to partner with you um, on PHL Live and thank City Council for this resolution and thank again all of these artists for continuing to do what you do and bring joy and music to everyone in Philadelphia. Thank you. Council will be at ease.
And thank you very much, and congratulations to all of you. Our next order of business will be communications, and the chair requests that the sergeant of arms delivers the messages from the mayor to the chief clerk. Mr. Decker, please read those messages. To the President and members of the Council of the City of Philadelphia, I am pleased to advise you that on February 22, 2017, I signed the following bill, which was passed by Council at a session on February 9, 2017, Bill number 161058. And I am submitting herewith for the consideration of your honorable body an ordinance amending Section 10 1000 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Fees to exempt the land bank from paying city recording fees in connection with property it acquires. Amending Chapter 16700 entitled Philadelphia Land Bank to provide for the leasing out of land bank property. And amending Chapter 191400 entitled, entitled Realty Transfer Tax to exempt the land bank and certain transactions involving the land bank from payment of realty transfer tax. And an ordinance amending Chapter 9200 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Commercial Activities on Streets by revising certain provisions relating to licenses and fees. And an ordinance amending Chapter 9500 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Boilers, Fuel, Heat, and Refrigeration to revise certain provisions relating, relating to licenses and fees and delete provisions relating to warm air heating apparatus. And an ordinance amending various provisions of the Philadelphia Code, in, 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 including Chapter 6300 entitled Food, Title 9 entitled Regulation of Businesses, Trades, and Professions, Chapter 10700 entitled Refuse and Littering, Chapter 11500 entitled Paving, and Chapter 19600 entitled Amusement Tax, to revise various provisions relating to fees, in, including for licenses and permits for food establishments, newspaper boxes, public parking lots, conducting assessments, Handbill distribution and sidewalk paving and to authorize revision of various fees by regulation. And an ordinance amending subcode A of the, the Philadelphia Administrative Code of Title IV of the, of the Philadelphia Code, entitled the Building Construction and Occupancy Code, by adding and revising various provisions relating to fees for permits, licenses, certificates, appeals, and services. And an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to enter into a sublease agreement with the Philadelphia Municipal Authority for use by the, ci by the city of the premises located at 1101 Market Street, all under certain terms and conditions. Thank you very much, Mr. Decker. you have any communications? Any I have none, Mr. President. Thank you very much. At this time, we will have introduction of bills and resolutions, and the Chair recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds-Brown. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm pleased to introduce one bill co-sponsored by my colleague, Bill Greenlee. Thank you, Councilwoman. An ordinance amending Section 14.513 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Transit Oriented Development Overlay District and Section 14.702 entitled Floor Area and Height Bonuses, all to revise requirements relating to the Transit Oriented, -oriented Development Overlay District. And Bill will be referred to the appropriate committee. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no bills or resolutions today. Thank you, Councilwoman. Chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. On your behalf, I offer one bill and one resolution. And on behalf of Councilman Heenan, I offer three resolutions. Oh, there he is. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. An ordinance authorizing Jeffrey Tubbs to construct on and maintain an open urban topiary at 1225 through 33 North 3rd Street. That bill will be referred to the appropriate committee. And a privileged resolution honoring Barney Boyce as Grand Marshal of the 247th Annual St. Patrick's Day Parade. And that will be on today's final passage calendar. And a privilege resolution honoring the St. Hubert Catholic High School cheerleading team on winning the National High School Cheerleading Championship. That will also be in this week's final passes calendar. <clears throat> and a privilege resolution honoring Father Judge High School students Jack Flynn and Dylan Fahey for their heroic actions on February 7, 2017. This week's final passes calendar.
And a non privilege resolution authorizing the Philadelphia Land Bank to dispose of certain properties located in the 5th Council Manic District in, in accordance with terms of Chapter 16700 of the Philadelphia Code. And that will be on next week's final passes calendar. Chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Mr. President, on my behalf, I offer one resolution non privileged, and on behalf of Councilman Johnson, I offer two. Thank you, Councilman. A privilege resolution recognizing and honoring one of Philadelphia's most prominent African-American doctors, Dr. Beverly G. Coleman, Director of Fetal Imaging at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia in further commemoration of Black History Month. This week's final passes calendar. And a privilege resolution authorizing the Committee on Transportation and Public Utilities to hold public hearings examining SEPTA transit system safety, including the particular issues of rail car defects and train derailment, as well as available measures to reduce safety risks to SEPTA riders and employees. This week's final pass is calendar. And a privilege resolution honoring, recognizing, and congratulating the African American Museum in Philadelphia in celebration of the, muse of the museum's 40th anniversary. And that will also be in this week's final passes calendar. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Kiona Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. President. I have four non privileged resolutions, I mean, two non privileged resolutions and four bills. Thank you, Councilwoman. An ordinance amending Chapter 9200 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Commercial Activities on Streets by revising certain provisions relating to licenses and fees. And an ordinance amending various provisions of the Philadelphia Code entitled Chapter 16300 entitled Food, Title 9 including Regulation of Business of Trades and Professions, Chapter 10700 entitled Refuse and Littering, Chapter 11500 entitled Paving, and Chapter 19600 entitled Amusement Tax to revise various provisions relating to fees. And an ordinance amending Chapter 9500 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Boilers, Fuel, Heat, and Refrigeration to revise certain provisions relating to licenses and fees, and an ordinance amending subcode A of the Philadelphia Administrative Code of Title IV of the Philadelphia Code by adding and revising various provisions relating to fees for permits, licenses, certificates, appeals, and services. Those four bills just read by the Chief Clerk will be referred to the appropriate committees. And a non-privileged resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fees, simple title to the city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements thereon, Next situated week. in the 19th Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Next week's final passes calendar. And a non privileged resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration. Deeds conveying conditional fees, simple title to the city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements are on, situated in the 19th Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Also on next week's final passes calendar, the Chair recognizes Councilman Green. Thank you, Council President. I have two non privileged resolutions, one on your behalf and one on behalf of Councilman Parker. Thank you, Councilman. A non privileged resolution urging Congress to vote in favor of H.R. 922, the Rehabilitation of Historic Schools Act of 2017, which amends the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 to allow rehabilitation expenditures for public school buildings to qualify for a rehabilitation credit, which would help the School District of Philadelphia with addressing its nearly 12,000 outstanding repairs that total almost $5 billion. And that will be on next week's final passes calendar. And a non-privileged resolution authorizing the creation of a special committee on regulatory review and reform to identify archaic, superfluous, and confusing provisions in the Philadelphia Code and in departmental regulations and to recommend revisions that streamline, clarify, and enhance the city's regulatory environment for the purpose of accelerating the growth of well-paying jobs in Philadelphia while ensuring the safety and well-being of its residents. And that will also be next week's final passes calendar. Chair recognizes Councilman Don. Morning, Council President. No bills or resolutions today. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Gim. Good morning, Council President. No bills or resolutions today. Thank you, Councilwoman. Chair recognizes Councilman Taubenberger. Good morning, Council President and colleagues. I have one privileged resolution, which has been co sponsored by Council Members Greenlee, Heenan, Jones, O, and O'Neill. Thank you, Councilman. A privileged resolution congratulating and honoring Philadelphia Lieutenant General Hubert. Herbert Raymond H.R. McMaster on his r recent appointment as National Security Advisor to the President. And that will be in this week's final passes calendar. Chair recognizes Councilman O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. 
Mr. President, I have no bills or resolutions. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Bass. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll offer one bill on behalf of Councilman Squilla and two privilege resolutions. Thank you, Councilwoman. An ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property on behalf of the City of Philadelphia to enter into a sublease agreement with the Philadelphia Authority for Industrial Development for the use by the City for, of the premises located at 1101 Market Street. Refer to committee. And a privilege resolution honoring and recognizing Philadelphia Flyers forward Wayne Simmons on being named the most valuable player in the National Hockey League All-Star Game and second African American in NHL history and first for the Philadelphia Flyers. That will be on today's final passes calendar. And a privilege resolution recognizing Caliph Jones as being selected as a 2017 Corpsman of the Year for his outstanding public service and dedication to the beautification and improvement of the environment. This week's final passes calendar, and this chair recognizes Councilman O. Thank you very much. I'll offer no bills or resolutions. Thank you, Councilman. That concludes our introduction of bills and resolutions. And our next order of business is reports on committee. And the chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee for a report from the Committee on Rules. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Rules reports one bill with a favorable recommendation. Second. Thank you. Mr. Decker, please read that report. To the President and members of the Council of the City of Philadelphia, the Committee on Rules, to which is referred Bill Number 170. 017 entitled an ordinance amending section 14507 of the Philadelphia Code entitled CDO Central Delaware Riverfront Overlay District by, ending, by amending provisions under certain terms and conditions. Respectfully reports it as considered and amended the same and returns the attached bill to council with a favorable recommendation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The chair again recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bill number 170017. <clears throat> Thank you. It has been moved and properly seconded that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bills number 170-017. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? And Councilwoman, did you want? After the after reporting of bills. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me report. Um, I believe we took the vote on ayes. Those opposed? Ayes have it. And this bill will be placed on our first reading calendar today. <clears throat> That concludes our report from the committee. And the next order of business is consideration of the calendar. I, I note that the bill just reported from committee with suspension of the rules has been deemed to have had a first reading. This bill will be placed on our second reading and final passes calendar for the next session of council. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown, can I recognize? Please now. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm <clears throat> remiss to uh, not acknowledge the students of the Hope Church School Choir who will be delighting us with music and song immediately following a city council session. So we ask those little people, young people, to please stand. Please stand. Quickly. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. They are phenomenal. Thank you for coming down today. We look forward to your, your wonderful, wonderful um, performance. Um, Mr. Decker, if you can please read it. any other bills on the first reading calendar. Bill number 170106, entitled An Ordinance Authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property and the Director of Commerce on behalf of the city to acquire an approximately 136-acre property known as the Airport Business Center, located in Tinicum Township, Delaware County, together with all improvements thereon. Chair agrees. Chair agrees. This bill will be placed on our second reading and final passes calendar on our next session of council. Chair now recognizes Councilman Heenan for the purpose of calling of bills and resolutions on the final passes calendar. Thank you, Mr. President. The following resolutions of bills are being called up for the second reading and final passage of today's calendar. Bill numbers 170146, 170147, 170148, 170151, 170152, 170154, 160902, 
160687AAA, 160895, and all other bills and resolutions are being held. Thank you, Councilman. Before considering these bills and resolutions on a final passes calendar today, we will have our public comment session. If you are interested in testifying on a bill or resolution that is on the final passes calendar today, um, if you haven't already done so, I ask you to sign up to the table to my left. When your name is called, you will go to the podium in the middle of the council chambers. There's a device on that podium. When the light turns green, it will be your time to speak. When the light turns yellow, you will have 30 seconds to conclude your remarks. And when the light turns red, we'd ask that you please uh, adhere to the guidelines and conclude your remarks. Thank you very much for your anticipated cooperation. Mr. Decker, please read the first name on the list. Diop Olugbala, commenting on 161114 and 160007. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> we were here last week. Uh, I'm a representative of the Black is Back Coalition as well as uh, the African community of uh, North Philly and your district in particular. reason I'm here right now, uh, well, first and foremost, uh, formally I just want to say that we are addressing uh, Resolution 161114, as well as uh, 160007. But uh, really what we have to say pertains to uh, every resolution and bill that's on the paper, uh, and that is uh, our... Uh, resolution that we drafted around the question of black community control of the police. As you know, last week we uh, were here at this uh, city council meeting to formally uh, introduce the resolution on black community control of the police, which is a resolution that calls for the ability for the African community uh, to have the collective authority to hire, fire, as well as set training standards uh, for how the police function in our community, and most importantly, uh, to have the ability uh, to subpoena police that violate the rights of our people. Uh, we are pursuing this resolution in this manner because we understand that this is the only opportunity that the people have to actually voice our opinion as it relates to public policy in the city of Philadelphia. Uh, and in that last meeting, uh, we again said, said that our goal is for this resolution to be passed. We also recognize that uh, you said that it has to be uh, written in a certain kind of uh, language, but uh, and that is something we are interested in learning how to do, but most importantly, we uh, know that the language must be shaped and defined by uh, the community in discussion with your office. So uh, we left on last week saying that the next step would be to have a meeting uh, where the community could voice uh, our opinions and uh, our concerns regarding the way the police function in our community and that same meeting would also serve as the forum through which uh, you can say concretely how we are moving forward in terms of getting this resolution passed. So uh, I know I have 45 seconds left, but again, uh, I want to use this time uh, to allow you to respond to the request and the demand uh, for this resolution to be passed by city council, using the due process, of course, in city council, but also uh, I need a concrete answer in terms of your ability to attend uh, the community meeting uh, in North Philly uh, where you can address the concerns of the people around this question. So two things. One, where are we in terms of passing this resolution? And two, uh, are you willing to sit down in a meeting with the community to hear the concerns uh, and opinions of the people regarding how this resolution needs to be passed? Uh, thank you for your testimony. Uh, our first meeting is tomorrow, 10 a.m., I believe, we agreed on. Am I correct? Well, yeah, but we I'm not. I'm asking you a question. Yeah, we said that there would be a meeting right. tomorrow so we with will representatives discuss. of the Black is Back Coalition. However, we also said as a condition of that, as a condition, Sir. that that meeting would not serve as a Sir. substitute for Sir. a meeting that would occur with you and the community. Sir, you're not going to out talk. We're not going to have any of this backdoor deal type we of We will have our have first. See, you know. You're, you're doing fine. Sir, 
our first meeting is tomorrow at 10 a.m. We will discuss all other aspects of what you said today at that 10 o'clock meeting. Okay? I will talk to you tomorrow. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. That's 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 what I'm giving you today. Okay. All right. Thank thank you very much for your testimony. Tomorrow at 10 a.m. I just did. Oh, Sir. Talk to you tomorrow. Talk to you tomorrow morning. to move on. Let's go. Mr. Decker, you have any additional names? There are no other speakers in the public comment list, Mr. President. Thank you very much. We will now move to our calendar. Mr. Decker, please read the title of 146. I'm sorry, 170146. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration these conveyed conditional fee simple title to serve the city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements that are on situated in the 24th Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. aye. 
Those opposed, ayes have it. Resolution 170-146 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 170-147. A resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the new Kensington Fishtown urban renewal area identified by house number and street address is 1415 Orange Street. Chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. Resolution 170-147 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 170-148. A resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to a certain city on lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements thereon situated in the 47th Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Chair again recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the adoption of the resolution. Second. I've been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. 170-148 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 170-151. A resolution authorizing the Philadelphia Land Bank to dispose of certain properties located in the second Councilmanic District. Chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank you. Motion. Thank you. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. Resolution 170-151 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 170-152. A resolution urging the U.S. Senate to vote no on the resolutions of disapproval that will block U.S. Department of Labor rules governing automatic enrollment, payroll deduction programs for states and cities, thus preventing these entities from helping millions of people save for retirement. Chair recognize Councilman Dunn. Thank you, Council President. On behalf of Council Member Parker, I move for the adoption of this resolution. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed? Chair recognizes Councilman O. Okay. Let the record reflect Councilman No. O voted nay. Resolution 170-152 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 170-154. A resolution authorizing the Philadelphia Land Bank to dispose of certain properties located in the first Councilmanic District. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Bass. Thank you. Thank you. It's been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. Resolution 170 154 is adopted. Mr. Decker, please read the title 160 902. A resolution proposing an amendment to the Philadelphia Home Rule Charter to provide for the creation, appointment, powers, and duties of a Philadelphia. Community Reinvestment Commission and providing for the submission of the amendment to the electors of Philadelphia. This, this resolution requires a two-thirds vote and we will also have a voice vote. Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Councilwoman Blackwell. Councilman Dom. Councilman Green. Councilman Greenlee. Councilwoman Gim. Councilman Heenan. Aye. Councilman Johnson is voting aye. Councilman Jones. Aye. Councilman O'Neill. Councilman O. Aye. Councilwoman Parker is voting aye. Councilwoman Sanchez. Aye. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Aye. Councilman Squilla. Aye. Councilman Taubenberger. Aye. Council President Clark. All right, the ayes are 16, the nays are zero. All members present voting in affirmative, that resolution passes. Mr. Decker, 160-687-AAA. An ordinance amending Title VI of the Philadelphia Code entitled Health to require disclosure of lead hazards including lead service lines and making technical changes. This bill has been voted on two, has been read two separate occasions. Mr. Decker, please call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Councilwoman Blackwell. Councilman Dom. Councilman Green. Councilman Greenlee. Councilwoman Gim. Councilman Heenan. Aye. Councilman Johnson is voting aye. Councilman Jones. Aye. Councilman O'Neill. Councilman O. 
Councilwoman Parker is voting aye. Councilwoman Gunnar Sanchez. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Councilman Squilla. Councilman Taubenberger. Council President Clark. Aye. Right, the ayes are 16, the nays are zero. Majority of members present. Voting in the affirmative, the bill passes. Mr. Decker, please read the title of 160895. An ordinance providing for the submission of the qualified electors of the City of Philadelphia. The proposal set forth in a resolution approved by Council proposing an amendment to the Philadelphia Home Rule Charter to provide for the creation appointment, powers and duties of the Philadelphia Community Reinvestment Commission and authorizing the appropriate officers to publish notice and to make arrangements for the special election. This bill has been heard on two separate days. The question is shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Councilwoman Blackwell. Councilman Dom. Councilman Green. Councilman Greenlee. Councilwoman Gim. Councilman Heenan. Councilman Johnson is voting aye. Councilman Jones. Councilman O'Neill. Councilman O. Councilwoman Parker is voting aye. Councilwoman Gunnar Sanchez. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Councilman Squilla. Councilman Taubenberger. Council President Clark. Aye, the ayes are 16 and nays are zero. Majority of members present. Voting in the affirmative, the bill passes. Mr. Decker, do you have any additional resolutions? A resolution honoring Barney Boyce as Grand Marshal of the 247th annual St. Patrick's Day Parade introduced by Councilman Greenlee on behalf of Councilman Heenan. Chair recognizes Councilman Heenan. That was on behalf of me by three minutes. <laughs> uh, I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. That resolution is adopted. And a privilege resolution, and not a resolution honoring the St. Hubert Catholic High School cheerleading team on winning the National High School Cheerleading Championship, introduced by Councilman Greenlee on behalf of Councilman Heenan. Chair, one more time, recognizes Councilman Heenan. I vote for the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. And that resolution is adopted. And a resolution honoring Father Judge High School students Jack Flynn and Dylan Febby for their heroic actions on February 7, 2017, introduced by Councilman Greenlee on behalf of Councilman Heenan. One more time, the chair recognizes Councilman Heenan. I move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. And that resolution is adopted. And a resolution recognizing and honoring one of Philadelphia's most prominent African-American doctors, Dr. Beverly G. Coleman, Director of Fetal Imaging at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia in further commemoration of Black History Month, introduced by Councilman Jones. Chair recognize Councilman Jones. Councilman Jones. Uh, Council President, I move for the adoption. Second. Been moved and probably second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution authorizing the Committee on Transportation and Public Utilities to hold public hearings examining SEPTA transit system safety, including the particular issues of rail car defects and train derailment, as well as available measures to reduce safety risks to SEPTA riders and employees, introduced by Councilman Jones on behalf of Councilman Johnson. Chair so recognizes Councilman Jones. That's what I was in my head. On behalf of Councilman Johnson, I move for uh, the passage of the resolution. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution honoring, recognizing, and congratulating the African American Museum in Philadelphia in celebration of the museum's 40th anniversary, introduced by Councilman Jones on behalf of Councilman Johnson. Chair again recognizes Councilman Jones. And again, on behalf of Councilman Johnson, I move for the adoption. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution congratulating and honoring Philadelphia Lieutenant General Herbert Raymond H.R. McMaster on his recent appointment as National Security Advisor to the President, introduced by Councilman Taubenberger. Chair recognizes Councilman Taubenberger. Council President, I move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, aye. And let the record reflect that Councilwoman Gim is voting nay. Um, the resolution passes. 
And a resolution honoring and recognizing Philadelphia Flyers forward Wayne Simmons on being named the most valuable player in the National Hockey League All-Star Game and the second African-American in NHL history and first for the Philadelphia Flyers introduced by Councilwoman Bass. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Bass. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. And a resolution recognizing Caleb Jones for being selected as a 2017 Corpsman of the Year for his outstanding public service and dedication to the beautification and improvement of the environment, introduced by Councilwoman Bass. Chair again recognizes Councilwoman Bass. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and that resolution is adopted. There are no other resolutions on the final passage calendar, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. Decker. Are there any speeches on behalf of the minority? And the chair recognizes Councilman O. Thank you, Council President. First thing I want to do was just thank Curtis Institute of Music for the, uh, the gift bag. Uh, it's got little items in there, some of the classical music CD that they do. They're a wonderful school here in Philadelphia, the most competitive music uh, institution. Uh, and uh, if you do get in, uh, everything is free, so it's truly competitive. Uh, I did want to just state that uh, I was very alarmed to hear about uh, uh, a, um, a possible change in our immigration policy, and it's not driven by immigration policy, but by national security, and that is that legal uh, residents uh, and persons who are legally here uh, they could be students, they could be workers, they could be investors or tourists. Uh, that uh, it is now being considered that they may be subject to deportation simply for being suspected of committing a crime. Uh, I think due process is a critical issue and one of the founding principles of our country and I certainly hope that that does not happen. So certainly urge everyone uh, to understand that uh, America is still not an isolated country. We do interface with other countries. They're scientists, they're artists, uh, they're educators, they're business people, they're investors, they're engineers. And this would have such a chilling effect. I think it already is. I think it is important that uh, uh, we don't go down this path. Um, security, yes, but uh, freezing of our uh, place and uh, opportunity to interface in the global uh, community, I think that is something that we enjoy very much right now to our benefit. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. On behalf of the majority, Chair Rickon, you want to order of business uh, first before we get to the majority uh, speeches. Uh, on behalf of Councilman Squilla, uh, there has been a request of leave of absence as a part of special oh, okay. business today. Okay, so he so he's going to be recorded re recording. Yes. Okay, a request for a leave of absence for Thank today's you. session. Thank you, Councilman. But since I have the microphone, <laughs> since I do have the microphone uh, in the speeches of the majority, uh, thank you for that. You know, especially during African American History uh, Month here in February, I'm proud to announced that uh, I'm proud of, you know, some of the schools and the, and the business that's taking place in, you know, throughout our city, but in particular at Lincoln High School, which is in my district, they have members of the Tuscany Airmen that are visiting. It's an African-American aviators in the United States military, and they're visiting Lincoln High School today, uh, highlighting Black History Month and educate students about the obstacles and triumphs of men and women of color who fought valiantly in World War II. So I just want to congratulate them uh, for having such a, <clears throat> I, I think, a prestigious opportunity to learn about the history uh, of our country, and in particular the African Americans who were served out with in World War II. So thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, going somewhat out of order, Chair recognizes Councilman Squilla. Uh, Mr. President, I uh, apologize. Uh, I um, was running a little late and uh, I'd like to be recorded uh, aye on all resolutions and, and bills today. <laughs> Thank you. So let to reflect that the, <clears throat> uh, the request for leave of absence has been repealed, and the councilman is in fact here, and he's voting out on all bills and resolutions. 
Thank you, Councilman. Thank you. Chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. I first want to thank my colleague, uh, Republican colleague, Councilman O, for his enlightened view on immigration and say that there's cross uh, aisle agreement on those kinds of issues and, and we find common ground. Um, secondly, I want to uh, take a brief moment to uh, let people know because they've been anxiously anticipating and awaiting the date of the ninth annual Block Captain's Boot Camp. I just want everyone to know that it is here. Um, it will be at St. Joe's University, March 18th, 2017. Um, we anticipate doing workshops on Block Captains 101, how to be a block captain, a emergency preparedness, grab and go bag so that you don't start to scatter at the worst moment in your life to pull your possessions together, public safety in a general way, public safety in a block by block way, livable communities is the subject, and most importantly, which is new, what can the state do for you? Uh, and inquiring minds want to know that today. So we're looking forward to it, and I just want to say that if you live in the 4th Councilmatic District, Winfield, Roxborough, uh, Overbrook, Overbrook Park, uh, Winfield Heights, and Parkside, and Carroll Park, and Haddington, please feel free to register because the first 100 block captains that sign up, there is a very special gift, and I really want to say on the record what it is, but I can't because we haven't finished paying for it. But with that, um, all are welcome. Uh, my colleagues often come up. Um, uh, the cutest thing in the world was um, a couple of us trying to exercise. Now, Blonde L. Reynolds Brown had an unfair advantage because she stays in shape. But the rest of us were just trying to keep up. Uh, but we welcome people to come out. You've been out there, Mr. President, and uh, it's always informative um, in its good interaction. You. Uh, I, I believe we were at a block captain's event where we made a public policy decision because of the overwhelming response from the block by block captain level we heard together. And we said, oh no, we're not going down that path. So we might gain some more insight as we come to these events. And I'm welcoming all my colleagues. We're looking forward to Councilman Dom uh, to come out this year. He is a he is, he is an anticipated guest. So with that, um, Saturday, March 18th, St. Joe's University, 10 a.m. Uh, to 2 a.m. Black Captain's Boot Camp. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. you, Councilman. Uh, as you indicated, I had an occasion to visit a couple of those. Pretty awesome event. Um, look, look forward to coming again. Chair recognizes Councilman Green. Thank you, Council President. Um, over the past uh, number of weeks, there has been um, dialogue regarding the actions of this body. Um, some have um, stated that we have not been the most business friendly of promoted or promoting small businesses in the city of Philadelphia. Um, some of the legislative action has occurred in Harrisburg, I think is based on that belief, as well as some of the commentary in our local publications. So I wanted to take this time to commend you for your leadership, uh, for the resolution uh, that I was honored to introduce on your behalf creating a special committee on regulatory review and reform. Um, as many people may know that our Philadelphia Code consists of over 2,000 pages of legislation uh, enacted by this body, some going back to the creation of our Home Rule Charter in 1951. In addition, various departments have adopted regulations over the decades based on the code. And so the resolution um, that was introduced in your leadership in putting forth um, this initiative, I think, continues to uh, encourage small business owners, myself being a former small business owner, as well as being attorneys rep represented small businesses, shows that this body has and will continue to be a supporter of small businesses here in the city of Philadelphia. I applaud you for your leadership and we will continue to support small businesses as a way to address and encourage entrepreneurship in the city of Philadelphia to reduce and, and eliminate poverty. So thank you. Thank you, Councilman. We look forward to um, working um, with all parties and stakeholders on that issue. And I do want to give uh, credit to um, our Commerce Director, Harold Epps, uh, in one of the conversations that we had. Uh, he, he suggested that we attempt to do something like this, and I want to give him kudos and look forward to it. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Gim. 
Yes, thank you, Council President. Um, though I want to be cautious about how we talk about Harrisburg, I did want to point out um, serious concerns about uh, our Senator Eichelberger um, commentary that were made last week at a town hall regarding primarily students of color all across the Commonwealth, um, which certainly implied that these students in the Commonwealth are not deserving of the fully funded and fully staffed schools that all students deserve. I feel that it is personally imperative that the Senate leadership rebuke and reject Senator Eichelberger's comments. Um, they certainly show uh, a level of concern, especially when state funding um, of public schools and in particular higher education. And I specifically want to point out Pennsylvania's struggle around HBCUs and its responsible funding of them is so closely to correlated to race that if we have a sitting state senator who is the chair of the education committee making highly controversial racialized remarks about students of color and implying that they do not have a right or should be accessing the fullest extent of all their educational opportunities, we are going to have a serious problem with the state. And it is my personal feeling that uh, Senator Eichelberger should step down as chair of the Edu Senate Education Committee in order to earn the fullest confidence of our state legislature um, to uphold the highest standards that we've got to ensure that we can approach this issue of responsible funding for our children and for our schools um, without the taint of racism and bias around those decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Chair recognize Councilwoman Bass. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to first start by echoing Councilwoman Gim's uh, comments about uh, that were made particularly towards students uh, in urban school districts. And, um, you know, just anyone who would make those sorts of comments is really unfit uh, to serve. And I know that, as Councilwoman Gim started out, we have to be careful about, you know, how we phrase things because we won't want to, um, you know, have an issue with Harrisburg, who we want to work with, but where you have someone who will, is willing to make a statement like this uh, about young people and young people of color primarily. Um, again, I just joined with um, Senator Vincent Hughes, who I know is all over this matter, and who is, um, you know, again declaring that this particular senator is really unfit to serve in this capacity. Uh, but actually, I. Um, uh, turned on my light because I wanted to talk about something else that was actually good news, uh, or at least good news for me, uh, in the 8th District. We have uh, one of our, uh, or actually four of our high school teams that are going to be competing in tonight's Public League Basketball Championships uh, for my district colleagues who do not have a team um, participating. Councilman Jones. Um, <laughs> I would say, you know, if you want to learn how to ball, just come uptown. It's all right. Uh, <laughs> um, but, but tonight, Imhotep Charter School's women's team uh, is going for their fourth straight championship title. Their men's team is also uh, very impressive and has been ranked number seven in the nation by USA Today. Uh, M. Hotep's men's team is going for its sixth championship tonight, and they'll square off against Martin Luther King High School at 7 this evening. Uh, MLK is going into this championship with an eight-game winning streak, so it's going to be very, very exciting tonight. Uh, also, M. Hotep's women's team will play against Mastery Charter North, which is at the Pickett Campus in Germantown. And uh, I just wanted to wish all of these teams the very best. And no matter who wins, the 8th District wins and the Northwest wins. And um, just congratulations to all of these young people for all of their hard work, seriously, and for their dedication and working so hard at their craft. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. And congratulations. Chair recognizes Councilman Dow. Thank you, Council President. I have two quick items. One, which I haven't spoken about yet this year, is the earned income tax credit. <laughs> I just want to remind everybody it's so important because we continue to leave $100 million. And what I did find out is you can file back three years plus the current year, so it's really four years. And just to reiterate, a single parent with two children earning 44000 or a couple earning 50000 with two children can get up to $6,000 from the federal government and file back three additional years, that's $24,000. That's found federal money. It's really not leaving $100 million. We're leaving $400 million. It's huge. Helps 40,000 people in the city who qualify. On a separate note, we have contacted the IRS, because it's in our opinion 
the internal revenue source is the source that could really help us. They know who qualifies. We're requesting they send out a notice. We haven't been successful yet, but we need everybody's help on this. So any ideas on this, we're open to them. But that's the source that can notify people. Second piece of, along these lines, you know, we have 400,000 people in the city in poverty. Last week with Controller Butkovitz, we hosted a dinner for about 20, 25 principals and teachers at the Federal Reserve in Philadelphia. They teach financial literacy courses. And the goal of this is that, and I'm, we're willing, I'm willing to raise the money for the business community or sponsor it, any school that's willing to become financially literate from K through six or K through eight or nine through 12, all classes, we will supply the money. The teachers will be taught by the Federal Reserve. They'll teach the kids how to balance a checkbook, how to save in a pension, 401k, how to buy a home, all the things that your parents taught that will be taught in these schools. And the goal that's financially literacy certified, the whole school, not just one grade, from K through six, and then from six to eight, and from nine to 12. So any council members who have specific schools, see me afterwards, I'm happy to work with the principals and get this program going. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman, uh, good information. Chair recognizes Councilman Squilla. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to uh, remind everybody and if they received an invite for the uh, Red Reading Terminal Market uh, party that's going on Saturday, 7 o'clock. All council members are invited. If you want to see a great time and uh, see a great event, stop down the Reading Terminal. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. And that concludes our speeches on behalf of the majority and minority. And with that, the chair recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds Brown for a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to kindly remind my colleagues and say thank you in advance for joining us at the fourth annual City Council celebration of African American History Month that includes art, culture, and entertainment, followed by a soulful lunch. With that, we want to move that council stand adjourned until Thursday, March 2nd, 2017 at 10 a.m. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. It's been moved to property second. The council stand adjourned until Thursday, March 2nd, 2017, 10 a.m. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you all very much. <laughs>